How you guys doing today? It's Anthony Ganji. Welcome to another episode of Tear Talk. Guys, we're going to have a great discussion today. We're going to talk about getting promoted and how well, when you get promoted, you're going to have to make sacrifices. Some will choose to make the sacrifice, get promoted and move up in their career. And some will say, well, you know what? I'm rather just, I'm rather just comfortable where I'm at. And I just want to let people know that this dialogue we're having is going to make you aware of some of the sacrifices that must be made and are the sacrifices worth it. I myself was an officer, moved my way up to admin. And my guest today, Joe, he was an officer, moved his way up to lieutenant. And by the way, each time we moved up, we had to make sacrifices. And it was always weighing whether the sacrifices were worth the position we were going to take. And I, and I think it's going to be a great dialogue, especially for those that are looking to move up so you can understand how you have to weigh in that choice, but also to make sure you have the proper mindset when you weigh in that choice. I mean, what are you really evaluating? Are you evaluating external incentives or are you evaluating something inward, something that maybe relates more to growth as opposed to positional authority? And I think it's going to be a great dialogue. Now, guys, mind you, the show is sponsored you by three entities. We have American Military University. Guys, if you get a chance, please check out American Military University. They're a great online school. If you're looking to bring experience into the education realm, please check out American Military University. Very supportive of what we do on Tier Talk. Also very supportive of what we do uh, just in the field of corrections. We also have Guardian RFID from inmate tracking and cell checks to cloud-based business and artificial intelligence. Guardian RFID digitally transforms jails, prisons, and juvenile detention facilities of every size. Visit guardianrfid.com for more information. And guys, please check out their YouTube channel. We also put content up there as well. Very informative content. And we also have Thin Gray Line Media, my partner, David Schilling. Guys, we're almost done. We're working on our next book. It should be out hopefully in a couple of weeks going through the line edits. But if you guys have a book looking to get something on the market, please check out www.thingraylinemedia.com. It lets you note, uh, it takes note of how much it's going to cost. And basically, if he accepts your book, um, you know, what the steps you could take to get it out into the market and make sure it gets seen. That's the key. This is my next book coming out, Lessons Learned While Working in a Prison, My Journey from Officer to Administration. And the book is pretty much about taking your correctional career to the next level. Again, that book should be out hopefully within a couple of weeks, just going through the line edits, which took a little bit longer than I anticipated. And then guys, I do have Inmate Manipulation Decoded already on the market. The link to that uh, is actually in my description. Joe, what's up, man? Round three on this one. What's up? <laughs> Anthony, what's up, my brother? I won't fail you this time, I promise. Hey, you know, <laughs> so as we go through the third temp, guys, you don't see the prior edits. But at the very beginning, Joe was calling me brother from another mother. Now we're on the third temp, and I'm just a brother. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm losing things. Uh, you go with the fourth one, you're just going to be a stepchild. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're going to get it right on this time. Hey, Joe, do you mind introducing yourself to our audience again? Absolutely. My name is Joe Pomponio. I'm a retired lieutenant with the Texas Department of Corrections of 30 years, 24 of which I was a uh, lieutenant, and I'm also a reoccurring panel member for Tier Talk. Yeah, actually four times today. Yeah, four. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, guys, I was out of the loop for a little bit, so I'm trying to get myself back into it. So this is a great episode. Getting promoted comes with sacrifice. We know that. And I really do believe that the sacrifices are worth it depending – on what your mindset is. What are the reasons why you want to get promoted? Because again, if you're getting promoted for just external incentives because uh, you don't want the, I mean, I'm sorry, you want uh, greater pay or and for my case, when I first got promoted, uh, sad to say, I didn't want certain people becoming my boss. So I decided, you know, let me give it a shot. Uh, having said that, that wasn't enough later on when you know, as you get to move up, you see what actually moving up is about. You really don't see what it's like from the frontline perspective. And once you start taking the position, you start to see how complicated those positions really are. So eventually what made the sacrifices worth it for me was I'm not seeking it for anything external. It's more inward driven. I want to grow and I want to develop and for me, the best way to grow and develop within this career of corrections in, in order to see what we're really about usually is to get the highest position possible and then to look down and see how everything runs at that highest level. But for me, it was growth. Growth is what made me decide that, you know what, even if I have a challenge, it's not an obstacle, it's an opportunity. And that mindset kept me going into the next position, which was officer to sergeant, 
sergeant to superintendent, superintendent to an associate administrator. So having that growth mindset helps me deal with the obstacles that most people would probably walk away from if they were just externally motivated. What's your thoughts on that, Joe, when it comes to taking that next position? Yeah, I mean, taking the next position has got a lot to do with your personal incentives. I mean, you know, you got to do it for the right reasons. And you got to know that, you know, every time that you think about stepping up, that, you know, there's going to be sacrifices with that. Um, you know, oddly enough, that's how my that's how my career as a sergeant started, you know, because uh, some of the candidates that put in for it, uh, I, I didn't want them to be my boss. And of course, you know, back then I had a lieutenant and a captain that uh, kind of mentored me. And, uh, you know, at the time I had a newborn, wasn't sure if I was really ready to take that step at that time. And, uh, you know, of course, they they played electrician on me, you know came in and cornered me in the office said, go ahead and go ahead and let those dumbasses be your supervisor. That's what you do. And of course, you know, that got me wired up enough to go ahead and put in my packet. Um, but, you know, once I made sergeant, you know, you find out pretty quick that the job is not what you thought it was. And, you know, some supervisors make it look easy because they have good time management skills and uh, good ethics, good integrity in the way they lead, uh, the way they delegate. You know, that's that's a major important thing, too. Um, but when you're stepping up, you got to do it for the right reasons. Um, if you're doing it just for monetary gain, um, you know, like when I stepped up as sergeant, you know, back in the early 90s, we didn't you know, uh, there was no overtime. We didn't get paid overtime. We just got time on the books. So I figured at that time, well, hell, you know, if, if I'm going to step up, I'm going to step up for the monetary gain, but also because I want to lead. It wasn't because of the money, because. The difference between an officer and a sergeant back then was only $72 more a month, you know, and the, and the step between sergeant and lieutenant was only $100 more a month. So it's not like I was doing it for the money. You know, that's, you know, back then that was two, two extra tanks of gas, maybe a month. Um, but you really got to, you got to think about it and you got to, you got to, you got to look at your family dynamics. You got to think about, you know, you got to do some soul searching and make sure that you're doing this for the right reason. Because, you know, with each step comes sacrifice and, you know, and with the sacrifice, it, there there's a lot of potential growth. You know, um, I've seen immature supervisors take the initial step and turn out to be some of the best supervisors we ever had because it changed their outlook. It changed their maturity level. Um, you know, there's a lot that there's there's more pros and cons. I'll put it that way. Yeah. And, and you mentioned something about sacrifice, guys. If you don't if you're totally externally driven. So maybe it is about, you know, that money or that position of authority. Those sacrifices are not going to translate well to also your family who may want that time with you. You know, so, again, we have to have value for what we do, and that will help us define the sacrifices that we make. So, again, if we don't want the sacrifices to be superficial, then we have to be a little bit more intentional and look inwards as to what are some of the inward inspiration for moving up because again you have to translate these sacrifices to those who are going to be affected by it so having said that my, my family understands the sacrifices i made initially because one they understood what the outcome would be eventually eventually you're going to work yourself uh, at first but eventually like like anything else you start to find a routine and eventually things start to pan out but it's always that initial step it's always going to be the initial step that's the hardest, but eventually your family starts to get used to some of these sacrifices as long as you explain what the main reason behind those sacrifices are. My, my family knows every effort I made to move up has been about them, you know, because again, it secures a higher pension for them. God forbid if something happens, they're, they're more taken care of. Uh, they also understand that uh, I like to grow. I, I, I don't like to remain stagnant. So if I started remaining in the same position, I would be miserable, start dreading work. And then the problem is that's going to trickle out into the home life. And the reason why my family knows that is because I tell them that, you know. So, you know, granted, my, when my wife sits there and she understands what I've done, she tries to understand it from not a selfish perspective because this is a career for me. And she wants me to also grow in that career. And, and by the way, that kind of, well, first of all, let's touch on that a little bit, 
too, Joe, because you did mention the sacrifices, right? So if you don't have value for the work being done, obviously the value can't translate to your family. That's one thing. So they're not going to truly understand the sacrifices that you have to make. Now, for me, my family understood the sacrifices. I, I you know, I, I made it intentional in telling them what those sacrifices are. But having said that, they always know, especially because of what I do, that I love this profession, that I don't want to remain stagnant. I want to try to move and I want to just try, try to secure the highest position. Now, some people may also think real quick that it's selfish when you're making those exchanges for family time. Maybe at first, but I'm going to tell you something right now, not to be an ass, but just to let people know, uh, I now got weekends off and I work eight to four, you know, and for some people that are like, well, you know, management doesn't understand what it's like to work those extra hours. First off, we do. I mean, I get the phone calls at the house. I'm not saying I don't get that. I mean, I get phone calls all the time when I'm with the family to, to, you know, help make decisions that have to be done at the prison level. But having said that, uh, I'm, I'm here, you know, I, I'm able to be home. And that's because of the sacrifices I made at the very beginning of my career. Uh, what's your thoughts on that when it comes to the value of the sacrifices? Yeah, the value of the sacrifices probably outweighs more, more than anything. Cause you know, you know, you mentioned the word stagnant, and that was part of the reason why I decided to promote because as an officer, I worked every position that I could possibly work on a shift, uh, you know, from a radio picket, uh, towers, uh, ad seg, you know, center hall, surface desk, command control, whatever. And, you know, which was all fine. And I also, you know, did some external jobs too. I was a paint squad officer. Uh, I was an armory officer. Um, did those as well. But at some point I just, you know, three years down the road, I just felt like I was stagnant. It was just like, you know, after a while, it just, it just felt like the same old shit, just another day to me. And, uh, you know, about that time is when a sergeant's position opened and, uh, had a Lieutenant and a captain that, that mentored me and, and wired me up to go, uh, up for Sergeant. Um, you know, you can, if you let yourself get stagnant, you wind up sacrificing not only your value, uh, your morale, your integrity, you know, your family life starts to suffer as well. Cause you know, when you get stagnant, it, it carries over into everything you do. And uh, you definitely don't want that. You know, the, the potential growth in correctional leadership is, is ungodly. And, you know, I have, I have regrets that I didn't, you know, I, I had the chance to, uh, to make captain several times and I didn't take it. And, you know, that's one of my woulda, coulda, shoulda regrets after, after retiring. Um, but, you know, truth be told, I was just having too much damn fun as a lieutenant, um, you know, leading my people. I had people right under me. The people above me left me alone for the most part because they knew I was an experienced leader, uh, what I was capable of. And, you know, I had a great group of employees for, you know, the whole time I was a lieutenant. And, you know, that was part of the reason why I never really chose to go up for captain. You know, I thought about it, kicked it around. Um I was just having too much damn fun as a lieutenant leading, man. I was, I was having a blast. Um, and that's, you know, that's important too. You got to, you got to have love for what you do. You know, you said it yourself, Anthony, you know, the family, the family knows, you know, that the initial onset of, of supervision comes with sacrifices, you know, phone calls, family time. Hey, shit's kicking off. We need you at the unit now. Um, you know, and every time I've had to, to tuck run and, 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 jot out the door you know it was always a kiss and you know it was never goodbye honey have have fun it's it was it was always you know be safe lieutenant pomponio that's what you do you know so that became the running thing but you know you, you got to do it you got to do it for the right reasons and you got to know that you know explain it up front to your family you know that that's the main thing a lot of people go up for supervision and they don't explain the possible the possible sacrifices that's going to come with this position, you know, it, it, all, all we see is the extra money that comes with the step up. You know, you got to be in order to keep that balance of the home life work life. You, you've got to explain to your significant other, Hey, there's going to be times where I got to, you know, 10 o'clock at night, I got to go suit up and, and respond and riot gear. You know, there's going to be times at two o'clock in the morning, maybe somebody's sick and gets hurt. I'm going to have to go in and cover, you know, things happen. And, you know, as long as you make your family aware of that up front, I, I think the end result will to be more positive than anything. And if you notice what Joe said also was we're not growing based on position. We're growing where we feel uh, we can be most challenged. And at that case here, I believe Joe 
loved the position of lieutenant enough because he stayed because he found the challenges as a leader very fulfilling. You know, because again, the bigger the challenge, the greater the reward. So having said that, it's not that he settled. It's just that 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 position offered a lot more that he felt related to his growth and development, especially being that upfront leader. You know, that leader that's, you know, a a little removed from the front line, but not so far where they can't get actively involved. And that's where Joe found his greatest worth. Success is really defined by happiness. You know, so again, we're not saying that um, in order for you to grow, you have to move up, you know, but in order for you to grow, you have to be intentional. You know, you have to be intentional and grow. uh, And Joe found his growth and development when he reached that lieutenant position and he felt the happy balance between having some power of authority, yes, but also remaining connected to that front line. And that's a great balance. And that's a great reason, one, to move up. And that's also a great reason to, you know, stay where you're at. Because, again, all because he stayed physically doesn't mean he stayed there mentally. So, but but having said that, it did require him to break out of his comfort zone. Because having said that, even as a lieutenant, you know, even as a lieutenant, He could have been stuck in so much of his position of authority that he could have just dealt with the rights. Like, yeah, you have to respect me because I'm a lieutenant. But then you realize, ah, rights eh, don't really carry that much after the first, you know, year or so. Usually it's more about, you know, the the fact that people give you permission to lead. And that could be challenging in itself every day to earn that trust and respect as a leader. So, again, Joe moved up, found the spot where it was most challenging and most rewarding. And he stayed there. And the sacrifice did come with, you know, going from one position to another and then ultimately to the, the rank of, of lieutenant where I wouldn't even say he settled in. I think lieutenant was a home. And that, to be for me, is where he found his greatest happiness. Now, guys, I want you to know something, too. Happiness, is, as I mentioned, is not determined by position. It's determined by, I'm sorry, success. Success, as mentioned before, is not determined by position. It's determined by how you feel. So again, for me, growth was something where I want to go higher up. I want, I want to understand the system as a whole. You know, I want to understand more than just the workings of my own department. And then, you know, I, I find myself sometimes, you know, on the admin level, looking down and watching the whole facility running. And I love it. I love it because eventually I'm going to have my stop. I, I can't see myself wanting to go past leading a house. Because I think leading a house gives me enough where I could see the operations of a facility, but also keeps me connected to my people, sort of similar to Joe. I think that if I moved up to a director, would I start to lose out and I would be less happy. Again, for me, I would maybe seeking that positionally, uh, but I don't think that would give me what I need. I think that keeping the house still keeps me connected to my people, but gives me the picture of what I need as as a whole. Of, of, of what I feel corrections is, even if, that, even if it's at a micro level, it gives me enough to feel happy because trust and believe running a house every day, it's going to be challenging. So having said that, there's never enough challenges to keep me growing. Um, and, and by the way, I want to mention something too, Joe, and this was great. This was great because for some people that may sit there and say, well, Joe settled for captain. He never settled for captain. Captain of him was where it was most rewarding. You know, but again, he wouldn't have known that if he didn't take the risk and cross into being a sergeant first and then a lieutenant. Now, guys, I want to mention something, too, when it comes to uh, growing. We talked about comfort versus growth. So obviously you there's no way you could be comfortable if you're looking to grow because growth is going out of your comfort zone. But I want to mention something, guys, when you're moving up into a position, some people may feel hesitant. They may feel that they're not ready. And I, when I was in Nebraska, I noticed that there were some people being moved up um, because, again, they were understaffed and they were being moved up quite quickly. And a lot of people felt that they weren't ready at that moment to move up. But at that point, they also had to seize the moment because they're understaffed. So eventually a senior staff member could be someone with two or three years in. And at that point, you know, sorry, at this point, here's the baton. We need your help. So I want people to realize something. When you move up, moving up is not about um you knowing everything it's about your potential so when when people decide that you're the person to move up it's not so much where you're at today but where they feel that you could be at tomorrow so i want you to know a lot of people that decide that hey i'm not ready for this uh i'm going to keep on going we're never ready 
You're, right. you're never going to be so comfortable to the point where that next step is going to be easy. It's never going to be easy. So I'm not going to say for you to wait till the timing's perfect because it's never going to be perfect because you're never going to go into the next position knowing everything. It's just not going to happen. And for, you, for those of you that think that's possible, then you truly don't understand the next position above. So having said that, this is truly about your potential. What's your thoughts on that, Joe? Yeah, I mean, for me, it, it, it never was about it never was about the growth upwards. It was about the growth outwards. You know, um, anybody anybody can go up, but you know, can you go out and around? Can you can you soak in everything around you? Are you willing to be taught? Uh, do you have that personal personal initiative to you know take a baton and run with it, and you know learn along the way? And and you said it best. You know, some people. Some people are, are promoted and, and they feel they're not ready. Um, some of them are selling themselves short uh, because, you know, other people see potential in them. And that's the reason why they, they have them promote. You know, the biggest thing is, you know, nobody's ever ready. But are you willing to learn? Are you willing to compromise, you know, uh, some of your beliefs and, and, and buckle in, learn and soak it in and apply it? Um, you know, that's I think that's where it all where, where it all meets the crossroads. Yeah, and I want to also add, guys, um, you know, some people believe that when you move up, uh, you get more freedom. Uh, and it's funny when they look at freedom, they kind of look at the physical layout. What they don't realize, guys, is that when you move up, you get greater responsibility. So when you have yeah, so when you have greater responsibility, believe it or not, you're not as free as you think you may be. You know, again, it's just some people may look at it physically like, oh, that's great when you know the administrator doesn't have to be stuck out of one post all day, or the sergeant gets to walk around from unit to unit. You know, that, that's not freedom. No, that's that's trust and believe that's not freedom. That's them checking on their bigger area of responsibility. So again, you have to be willing to sacrifice freedom for responsibility. But when it comes to responsibility, it's responsibility for people that are outside of you. You know, when, when you're front line, you may only have that responsibility towards yourself. Don't get me wrong. We do have a responsibility to our team, but I'm saying, but you are only going to be responsible to some level of your actions where the supervisor or the people in the higher positions, they take responsibility of the actions of everyone. And they could be removed, even if they never even met the person for those actions that someone committed to that just weren't correct. So having said that, moving up, you know, that, that's not about gaining freedom. It's not yeah. actually you have the illusion of freedom, but technically you wind up becoming overwhelmed with those areas of responsibility. So, so Joe, do you feel as you moved up that freedom does lessen and is replaced with higher levels of responsibility? Oh, absolutely. You know, what the, what the lower levels consider freedom, we call time management, um, you know, because you definitely you definitely gain more responsibility as you move up, you know, especially from sergeant to lieutenant, because uh, you're basically in charge of that unit. You're basically in charge of the shift and, and the people underneath it. And, you know, multiple areas to look at during the course of a day and of course management by walking around. You know, uh, and, and, and the officers, you know, the, especially the new ones, well, hell, he gets to go wherever he wants to. Well, no, 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 not really. Physically, I can go wherever I want to, yes. But, uh, you know, I, I kind of got a time management thing. I got to make sure I hit all my areas, check on all my bosses. I got to go to ad seg, make sure 30-minute checks have been conducted. Uh, you know, of course, you know, down here now, they're they're in the, the midst of heat, heat season. So, you know. We got all the heat policy implementations that we got to check on to make sure that, you know, all that's going. And all the meanwhile, you know, you still got child to, child to feed and a child hall to run and you got counts to do and um, whatever, whatever, you know, other tedious paperwork comes up, you know. So one person's freedom is another person's time management. And I'm going to tell you something, guys. <laughs> uh, you, you, you notice that lack of freedom as you start to move up in your home. And you're getting the phone calls uh, to make those decisions. You know, definitely as you start to move up, it does, it, it, it kind of does affect the family life a little bit more uh, each time you start to move up. 
Um, I noticed that uh, when I became a sergeant, it wasn't as bad. Uh, but definitely when I became a superintendent, you got the on-call responsibilities. Now it's definitely crossing into family life. And then obviously as an, as an associate now, you're definitely crossing into uh, family life. So I also think as you start to move up, it does affect family time because, again, you're going to start getting the phone calls at the house because you are the one that are responsible ultimately for the end game of the decisions being made. And that's where it comes from, that freedom versus responsibility. The more you move up, the closer you are to the to the decision making and the responsibility of the final result. You know, people got to realize that as you start to move up, you're also taking into uh, account that every time you move up, you're willing to take responsibility of the end result. You know, people got to realize that. So the closer you move up, the less you have to defer it to, if you will. That's so when you realize that there's no one else to defer it to, people are going to start calling you. You know, so be be wary of that. I think that's a very big um thought before you move up as you move up be where be wary of that eventually you know as you continue to move up you will be the end result so eventually as front line you can look upwards you know and 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 get help uh for us as you start to move up our resources are yes you know but those resources come with some level of of guidance from above so you know what's your thoughts on that joe how how it how it eventually shift. Oh yeah. You know, the, the higher you go up, the, the, you know, the higher you go up is, you know, the, the, it seems like the less resources you have and more and more of the spotlights on you, you know, and I'll tell you straight out, I, I've got to tip my hat and, you know, show gratitude and props to the duty wardens all over the States, you know, that take on that responsibility uh, of on call, you know, and duty weekends and having to make those decisions for the unit, having to make those decisions for visitation, um, getting the, the, the phone calls in the middle of the night, you know, I, I've seen many of assistant warden, uh, down here, the duty wardens are your majors, assistant wardens and wardens. Um, now I've seen a host of them, you know, two phones, one on each hip, you know, plus an iPhone to, to keep in contact with the, with the administration in Huntsville, the main offices and stuff. And, you know, after, after a couple of duty weekends in a month, you know, I, I've seen some of them come show back up to work on Monday looking like the walking dead, man. And, and, and I could, you could just tell their phone rang nonstop through the night, all hours. Um, you know, so I, I, I give my, I, I've definitely got to give props to these folks for, for, you know, taking that challenge on because that cannot be easy, you know, especially sleeping, sleeping next to your significant other when the phone starts ringing at midnight and doesn't stop ringing until 430 in the morning because you have fights, you have suicides, you have fires, you have a homicide, you know, whatever the case may be. And, uh, you know, it's as you you can definitely tell by looking at some of these individuals as you move up their resources, you know, dwindle, you know, it's like the top of a tree. As you as you get to the top of that tree, there's less and less branches for you to hold on to, you know, so, you know, all your supports underneath you, not above you. So it's yeah. definitely, definitely noticeable. Yeah. And, and, and guys, I want to mention something, too. As you start to move up, like for us, we do speak at conferences. Uh, a lot of the conferences now we're speaking at are leadership conferences. And one of the things they look for uh, are not so much the work that we've done, but also the sacrifices we've made. So, you know, it's great to be able to be a leader ourselves and to share into that level of sacrifice that are made by the other leaders to seek those higher positions, especially if it's for the right reasons. Hey, Joe, do you have anything you'd like to say in closing? I wanted to keep this dialogue quick, uh, but I just wanted to know, uh, you know, I just wanted to get it out there. It was a question that was asked of me, and I wanted to put something out there that isn't so surface. Do you have anything you'd like to say in closing, Joe? Yeah, I mean, you know, don't don't let the fact of of – personal personal experience or lack thereof um, hinder you from from going up for for rank um, you know anything you do no matter what job you're in not just corrections you know even even free world jobs when you move up you know there's there's sacrifices um, so don't let personal beliefs or personal experience lack of, of experience hinder you from going up because you know, there's a lot of great opportunity out there, um, especially if you have the personal initiative to to have true leadership skills. Um, I, I tell you, as short as all these agencies are across the states now, now's the time uh, to get out there, get your name out there. You know, let people see you, let people, you know, see your work ethics and stuff. Um, now's the time to step up, folks, um, you know, and show true leadership skills. Get out there, teach your folks, lead them. 
you know, and, and don't let, you know, don't let the, the decision between officer and sergeant is probably the most, is probably the most uh, scarce um, as an initial step. But once, once you're a sergeant, uh, the rest of them, you know, from sergeant to lieutenant is a breeze um, as far as job performance. Now, you know, you'll sacrifice time and, and, and some other things, but, you know, if, if you got the right personal gain uh, to want to get out there and be a true leader, I, I highly suggest you do it because don't let yourself get stagnant in anything you do um, because it will ultimately turn you sour and make you miserable. You know, if, if you're happy in what you do, you never work a day in your life. That's spot on, Joe. And guys, the reason why we had this dialogue is, again, I, I just want to make sure people know we need good leaders right now. And stepping into this position is going to be a challenge, but this is when we need you the most. It's through the hardest of times we get the strongest of people. I know a lot of people are like, well, I don't want to lead in this environment. Well, this is why we need good leaders. Without struggle, there's no progress. So, you know, then you're not the type of leader I would want anyway. I want the people that want to step up and take responsibility now, regardless of the external. You know, I want people that are inward driven that rise up. You know, I want people that want to take the ball with a minute left. You know, that's what we need. And hopefully that opens up a window for others to seize the opportunity as well for the right reasons. But this was dialogue that's not so surface. This is dialogue that usually doesn't get discussed, but should be in the in, in your mind when you're making that decision. This was us to get the right mindset. So when we make our decision, yes or no, it's based on right reasons. It's not based on superficial reasons. Because in the end, guys, when you retire, you're going to look back at your career and ask yourself, did I do everything I could have done? And then you're going to have to go back and find out if what you said was really an excuse. And at the end of the day, that really wasn't enough to overpower the regret you're going to have 25 years later when maybe you could have done more. You know, again, depending on what those reasons are. For me, it's about growth. So I know where I'm going to be happy when it comes to my end result of my inward growth in this profession. So when I look back from 25 years or after retiring, I'm going to be pretty happy with what I've done because I seized every opportunity. Now for me, that was upwards growth. Now, now there's, as I said, outwards growth as well, either way. But the point is, are you being intentional? Are you seizing the opportunities or are you just coming up with excuses and, and actually have, you know, excuse and sacrifice are not the same things. And you're going to realize that later on at the end of your career when you could have done more. And now the word sacrifice has become an excuse. Just saying. As always, guys, the show is tiered. If you haven't, please subscribe, interact, engage, comment, hit that bell. Bell's going to notify you every time I post a video. Stay safe.